and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guest, somebody who I've known for a couple of years now, somebody who I respect tremendously in our industry, someone who is global luxury. Michael Lafito, welcome to the show. How are you, my brother? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited. I am so glad you're here. We just saw each other. We've been doing a little bit of traveling, and it's almost like the world is starting to open up again. You know, it, it, it is. Yeah, we were just in Orlando last week for the Florida Association of Realtor Conference. I think there was a couple thousand agents there. Of course, uh, people are being extra precautious, but yes. uh, it, it's good to see, you know, people at conferences again. I know. And now you're part of the EXP family, and we're looking to sort of look at I think it's 7,000 people we're expecting in, in Vegas in November. I, I, it's going to be great. I can't wait. I mean, it's going to be amazing. And we were just in Dallas and it's sort of like, it's just a lot of fun. It's sort of like things are all starting, but you know, you've got so much experience in the luxury market on a global scale, which is what this podcast was really all about and how it started. But before we jump right into it, because we're going to start breaking down a lot of stuff, but for the sake of the audience that may not be familiar with you because thankfully we're now um, distributed in over 90 countries. So wow. tell us a little bit about who Michael is and how you got started in this crazy industry of ours. Yeah, so Michael Lafito, I'm based in the Chicagoland suburbs and I've been licensed since 2000 and I was a part-time real estate agent and a full-time high school teacher from 1998 to 2010. Wow. And so I was a part-time agent for 10 years, but we were, you know, became really successful and a top agent in the in the marketplace. I was the second leading producer for the entire Midwest for a, a major franchise, and uh, and then we had a, a baby. My wife and I, uh, we had our son, and she was pregnant with number two. And so I was I was burning the candle on both ends, teaching and and real estate. And then so 2010, I I broke away from uh, the teaching high school health and physical education and really focused on real estate. And um, you know, was like I said, pretty successful at that. And we launched my I launched my speaking and training career, and then we really started to focus on luxury uh, in 2013, 2014. I love that. So wait a minute. So what did you teach? You were a high school teacher. I don't think I knew this about you. What yeah, I was a high school health and phys physical education teacher. I coached football and uh, I was a part-time agent, right? School got done at three o'clock and sold real estate in the late afternoon evenings and on weekends. And, uh, you know, I had a real big database and was kind of known in my community. So that, that kind of helped out. And you know what? We're going to start breaking this down. But you did indeed create your public speaking career and things like that. So talk to what you created was a brand, right? So Talk to me about someone who wants to go in and brand themselves in this industry. What advice would you give someone who wants to create themselves as a brand? Well, we all have a great story, Michael, but most people, yeah. um, they're really self-conscious about their story, or maybe they don't feel like their story would resonate, or, or maybe they're, they're not proud of their story. But part of your background and, and what molds and shapes all of us to where we're at today, it should be told in a story. So for me, part of my story was, I, you know, if you were interviewing me as a seller, I, I would let, let you know, I'm a former, you know, high school health and physical education teacher, or at that yeah. time, I am a teacher, but I looked at it as bringing more value to the table. So I'm, I'm good with working with different personalities and different learning modalities, right? So some people are hands-on, some people are visual, some people are, audio, you know, audio only. And so, you know, real estate's all about having connections, but it's also about negotiating. And so when you know who you're negotiating with and their personality type, uh, there's a there's an art with that and to make them feel like, you know, they got what they want, but ultimately, Mr. Seller, we got you what you wanted. So being able to articulate and how your background and your previous, you know, life, your previous industry, what you did for a living, taking that and helping mold that into your story but most people are either ashamed of that or they think that's going to hurt because they might be up against you know Johnny Rockstar top agent who you know came from real estate and that's all they've known and you know real estate's really about relationships and building 100%. trust and likability you know one of my favorite qu quotes michael is from daniel kamen who's a nobel peace prize winner and he says people would rather do business with someone they like and they trust 
rather than someone they don't. Even if this likable person is offering a lower quality product and service at a higher price. So of course we're teaching agents to bring a higher quality product and service yeah. to the table. And so they shouldn't have to discount, but bring more value. And so if the, the client sees more value, they're less like, likely to beat you up over your fee. You know, you just said some really amazing nuggets there because it's so true. It is all about relationships. That's all we do. It's our business. And so it's also storytelling. It's who we are, right? We tell a story about a property. We tell a story about a, a town, a neighborhood, a place. So in the same way, we're telling a story about ourselves so that we're bridging that gap so that that relationship is deeper. You're absolutely right. And most people are self-conscious. They, they don't like the way they look. They put on COVID-15. They don't like themselves in video, whatever it might be. But, but the reality is, you know, we bring something to the table and we each have our own story and be able to craft your story and be comfortable with your story. But think about some of the most successful pastors at churches or some of the people you have a, you have a, a block party or you go to a, yeah. an evening event and who, who, who do people gravitate to? You know, the people that are great storytellers that have great humor. And so, you know, that's something, some people it comes natural, but you can learn that and you can, you can improve yourself and in, in, in being more likable and, and a better storyteller. But by storytelling, we're not just ta talking about made up stories, right? We're talking right. <laughs> about being able to articulate your message and what you bring to the table, what your company brings to the table, your unique value proposition in a way that doesn't feel like you're selling them on something. Yep. Yep. And you know, you are an expert at this because then you're also a marketing expert and I'm looking behind you and you've got your Lux luxury listing specialist. You've got your book covers that you've done and other things, and you've really created this. And I love a term that you use. You use a term that's called high caliber marketing as opposed to traditional marketing. And I love that because I've actually seen a lot of what you've done with that. And I think it's brilliant what you do. Tell us a little bit about what that means to you and maybe even some examples of what a high caliber marketing expertise is what does that look like yeah so you know there's 1.5 million realtors out there everybody knows a real estate agent you know in <laughs> chicagoland i think we and have that's just in the u.s that's just in the u.s right. correct correct yes this is a global audience so there's 20 million realtors so <laughs> that's right you know, there's there's so many real estate professionals out there and so what are you doing as a as an agent as a team leader as a broker owner i don't care if you run a, a dry cleaning business but yep. what are you doing to differentiate your business or your set of skills versus the competition right and there's so many messages out there think of it as las vegas or, or times square there's so many advertisements going on what are you doing to be top of mind awareness right and so high caliber marketing is uh, it, it's a multitude of things. It's not just, you know, maybe physical marketing, but it could be digital, it could be your branding, could be your online presence. You know, people are gonna Google you, they're gonna look you up, Michael. And so you gotta be consistent with your branding. It's gotta be optimized. I call it a SWOT analysis. You know, you gotta know what your strengths are and some things that you can improve with your online presence and, and what are some opportunities and maybe some things that you could, you know, threats to you in your marketplace. And so I encourage the people that are watching and listening to do what's called a fresh eyes analysis. You know, it's like if you're you're doing a if you're doing your exam in college and you're trying to, to to graduate, you know, and you write this big thesis or this big paper, Michael, what do you do? You hand it over to somebody else, say, hey, would you proof this? Because I want to make sure I'm not missing something, but because it reads good to me, but it might not read good to you. And so you read it and I have somebody else and you poke holes through it. Well, some of us need fresh eyes analysis on our branding and our marketing on our website on our LinkedIn profile and our Facebook or whatever it might be, because to you, it looks good. But to somebody else who's got a little bit different experience or brings a different personality type or different you know, background to the table, they might be able to help you to optimize it. So, you know, some examples of, of high caliber marketing in, in, in my business, I'm in real estate as a licensed agent. And if I'm going on a listing appointment, you know, I might be up against three or four other agents. They bring their iPad or their laptop and I'm showing up with a video brochure. The video brochure has got a 10 inch monitor and I can literally open it up and, and hit the play button and 
and I can show them videos of homes that we've marketed. And it's it's the power of demonstration. It's no different than those late night infomercials. Why are late night infomercials so successful? Because in a short one minute or 30 second span, they demonstrate their product. Um, and so you have to de demonstrate your unique value proposition in a unique way, in a different caliber way. You know, many agents, they call pre-listing packages. So if, if a seller was interviewing me this Saturday, to market their home, what could I do before Saturday to have them pre-sold on me? Of course, video is really important, right? So I like doing video, they feel like they know you, but sure. we physically send a, a box of materials to them so that they go through it ahead of time and they're pre-sold on us, so to speak. So, so wait, what's in the box? So in the box, it could be brochures, could be a book. We've written a lot of books. You mentioned them. Yep. So we will include books. We'll include some before and after books. So we we put together a portfolio of basically show and tell, if you will, before and after books. Before book would be, you know, a home similar to theirs, maybe to their style. And after would be after between our interior designer, maybe our stage or the way we photograph. And we show them, we don't just tell them, but we show yep. them how we're different. I love so you're continuing being a storyteller. It's it's, it's it's storytelling and it's about the experience. It's really right. about the experience. So most people would go in there with a brochure. You're going in with a video. So you're going from two dimensional to three. They're feeling it at that point, right? So when you're looking at something or someone is coming in and they're not expecting a box in the mail, you know, it's like somebody opens a box. Somebody Who doesn't like it. Who doesn't like getting a box? In exactly. The box? I mean, they're excited. They're opening it, right? right. And, um, so you're absolutely right. It, it, it's a it's a way to differentiate yourself yes. and your storytelling, but you're also building rapport. So I had an agent who I was recruiting to my team a few years back. We were on a four million dollar listing appointment, Michael, and she afterwards we debriefed a little bit. And I just said, "Hey, yeah. what questions did you have, Lauren?" You know, she goes, "You know, you never went into your presentation." Well. I knew what this gentleman's personality type was before the appointment through my conversations with him. Plus I look, I Googled him and looked him yeah, up. Yeah. And so I knew that, you know, he had, he was a high eye, but he also had a lot of S in him. And so he just wanted to talk the whole time. And I just listened and I, I'm a driver and I'm a bottom line, a quick, I believe me, it was a long two, two and a half hour appointment. And I could have been out of there in 45 minutes, but but it was about the rapport building, like that Daniel Kamen or like Theodore Roosevelt once says, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. So that's right. You know, that's all about personality type mirroring and, and being able to uh, quickly pick up on that. And your conversion rate will skyrocket once you master that. I love that. So now that you're an expert in all of this field, which is a, a highly, highly competitive field, what does luxury mean to you, Michael? Define it for me. Well, I think luxury has a lot of definitions, so I'm going to define it two ways. So the first way luxury, I'm going to define it and it comes to real estate, right? Real estate, yep. your listeners are all over the world and, you know, a lot of brands define luxury, especially in the United States, as home prices that are a million dollars and above. Some brands call it the top 10% of their market. You got to figure out, you, got, you have to have a math degree to figure out some of those <laughs> definitions. Uh, so for, you know, I, I'm, I'm the founder of the Lux designation, luxury listing specialist. And for our course, we define a luxury home price as a, you got to figure out what for your market, what your average sale price is. Most agents are pretty good figuring out what their average sale price, right. whether it be their lender, the title company, you can, your multiple listing service or some uh, organization can usually provide you with the average. Median is more accurate, but most people aren't good with math. So I, I teach average. And so based on average, Michael, we define luxury home pricing as three times the average sale price. So if the average sale price is 500,000, 500 times three, 1.5 million and above would be considered a luxury uh, sale price or asking price. But, you know, luxury, the true definition of luxury is really, I think, about experience. It's high quality. It's high experience. It's, you know, silver platter, white glove. It, it's really all of the above. I mean, it's really hard to define luxury overall. Many of us have experienced it maybe when we didn't think we were going to. Others, sure. we expected 
to experience it. And maybe there was a letdown because of the customer service or the quality, whether it be the food or, or, or the dining or the atmosphere or the location. So I think luxury, it's, it's really about experience. Um, it's really about the way you feel afterwards, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, you, just like your listeners, they'll they'll forget a lot of things I say, but they'll never forget how I made them feel. So hopefully they're inspired and they feel good about themselves, but they'll remember that, but they might forget some of the, the meat and potatoes of the message. Yeah, no, that's really true. You know, it's sort of like when I start thinking about luxury and, you know, that I've been in the luxury market a long time as well, it's almost as though it's it's that type of lifestyle that you're talking about, right? And it's also the fact that to me, luxury also represents freedom, freedom of time to be able to go and focus on enjoying what luxury is, right? And it might just be that indefinable type of thing and experience that it's time that you have to spend with your family somewhere. And it's the memories that you create from that is what really truly for me creates what luxury is because that's what you hold on to, right? And so I think that that's really the final thing because I think you've done that so masterfully also, Michael. I think that if everyone sort of gets caught up in the fact that it's a price point, but it's not, it's an experience. Mm-hmm. It you know? really is. Yeah, yeah. And you've done it so beautifully. And it's always been great to sort of like watch what you've been doing because you create that lifestyle. And when you well, actually enter into it, it's where your freedom comes. Well, you bring up a great point. It is is like one of the things that we've, uh, you know, improved our trainings right throughout. Yeah. You know, we launched our designation over five years ago, and we do now, of course, Zoom, but in person, right? And most of the time, they were in person pre-pandemic, but. We did one recently in May of 2021. It was in Napa. It was at a winery. And part of that experience was we did a wine tasting at the end. And and, on day two, we toured an $18 million and a $16.5 million property. And so it was, could I have been in the classroom and taught more X's and O's and more meat and potatoes and more content? Absolutely. But it's part, part of it is the experience. That's right. And the day is always better with wine. It's all, it's a great way to maybe start the day, but definitely end the day. So Michael, tell me what the greatest lesson you've learned thus far in your career. You know, the greatest lesson is, you know, be honest with people early on. If, if, if you have an un, unrealistic client, uh, unrealistic team member, you know, I, I don't like to offend. I don't like to disappoint anybody, but being able to be honest with them in a way that is come coming from a caring position, not you know a crude dictator position, but uh, letting them know that you're frustrated or you're disappointed or you know I don't think we're the right fit or you know I'm not seeing how you're coming up with that asking price of you know 10.5 million. All the data I'm sh- seeing out there supports you know six million or, or what, whatever it might be. Having those difficult conversations, but being honest, you know, and one of the greatest things. A mentor once shared with me is is the saying, Michael, can I be direct with you? And most people aren't going to say, well, no, don't be direct with me. And then when you're direct with them, do so in a caring way, but, but you know, st- be a sh- straight shooter. I love that because it's also your reputation, right? And it's all, you're, you're an advisor, especially in the luxury market. You're an advisor and you have to be able to advise not only the buyer, but the seller really in going through this process because all you have is your word and your reputation. And going back to the original question, how we started this, how you create a brand, you create a brand with consistency and Mm -hmm. being able to sort of be that person that stands by their word. So I love that answer. Yeah. And, you know, the only other thing I would add to that is like you said, be consistent, whether it be a long time uh, repeat customer or a newer client, you know, Go through your whole marketing, go go through what you do. Don't make the assumption, hey, the listing's mine, so I'm not going to suggest this or yes. whatever it might be. You know, I, I'm of a philosophy. I'd rather have this conversation. And so later down the road, if something pops up, they can't say, well, Mike, you never told me that you recommend, you know, I do this to the house or you never recommended that I do this. I'd rather leave it out there. So I can sleep at night knowing I gave them all their options. Cause like you said, you were you use the word advisor and that's really 
I believe what we are, we're trusted advisors. I'm That's not right. a salesperson, right? A salesperson tries to get to the sale. An advisor, a consultant says, you know what, Michael, based on, on everything you've shared with me, you know, I think these properties make sense. The one that you're really, you're telling me you, you want to be, you know, overlooking the water and this one overlooks the city, or you told me you want to be back to an open area and this backs up to a highway. Listen, if you want to buy the home, that's totally up to you. But I just want to make sure all along you've been telling me A, B, C, and D. And now we're looking at something totally different. So I just want to make sure that this is what you, what you want. Now, this home has been on for a while and it's probably been on a while because it backs up to this area. Right, so, exactly. You, you know, so I'd rather sleep at night knowing I gave them the options. I'm not talking them out of a sale, but I'm just letting them know that I've listened to them and I'm repeating to them what they've told me based on our conversations. Which is so important because it is so that you actually have to be that listener. That's part of the advising. You have to be able to say, that's not what we spoke about. Has something changed, right? And so I think that's beautiful. So talk to me about this. Now, you know, we're in this market where nothing stays on the market. It is a seller's market like crazy in most areas around the globe. And so you've been in the industry now over 20 years, very similar to my time frame. So somebody coming into the market today, what would be three pieces of advice that you would offer that individual? Uh, number one, I would say join a team. It's a lot easier to scale, uh, leveraging team member successes, leveraging the knowledge and the experience. You know, Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. It Figure sure out does. what someone else has done. Successfully model it, tweak it, make it your own. So, you know, joining a team, an organization uh, will, will scale you up a lot quicker. Um, number two, I would say is, is mentorship uh, that that is a little bit more one on one ish could, could be a coach, but having number two would be a, a mentor right. Um, you think about, you know, Michael Jordan had had a coach even when he was at the top of his game right so having a mentor having a coach. The third thing I would say is diversification of your portfolio, so if you were to win the lottery and you won the, the mega, mega lotto, you won a hundred million bucks, your financial advisor would tell you to diversify that por portfolio, have some long-term, have some short-term, have some high risk, some low risk. Most agents, not just newer agents, but most newer agents and all agents focus, I think, on the starter price points and the average price points. And I would just challenge those that are watching to don't be afraid of those upper price points, okay? Don't be afraid of some of those upper price points. I think that's the fastest way for an agent to make more money over the next 12 months. Absolutely. There's three ways an agent can make more money. Number one, they could sell more homes, but I don't know about you. That sounds like more work to me, Michael. <laughs> I'm all about working smarter, not harder. Number two, is to be more profitable per transaction. So be smart, don't be frugal with your investment money, but also don't waste money. Right. Don't be afraid, like I said earlier, to be honest and direct with your clients. So Michael, I know you want me to do that big advertisement in the New York Times, or I know you want me to advertise in this magazine, but statistically, I haven't had any luck with print marketing as of late because everybody's going online. So I'd rather make those, those investments through a, str a strong digital marketing campaign sure. or through a video, which I can leverage through driving online traffic to your single property website. And and so that's an example of being more profitable per transaction because I'm not wasting money because I want to appease you, but I'm telling you what needs to happen versus what you want to hear. And most agents aren't good at that because they lack the confidence and the experience. Um, so, so being um, not frugal, but being smart with your investments, okay, whether it be the branding, your marketing. And then number three, I would say would be increase your average sale price. I think that's the lowest hanging fruit on how an agent could be more profitable. You know, don't go for the home runs and, and the mega mansions right off the bat because that might not pay the bills, but, but don't be afraid to go after some of those. I like that. And one of the things that you just mentioned, Michael, was mentorship. And I think that that's a really beautiful one because you really embrace that. You know, you are the author of three books. You are a podcast host as well. I've had the pleasure of being on your podcast. And, you know, mentorship is important to you. You know, it's the idea of you sort of saying that mentorship was, was really on a one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, you actually touch a lot of people through your books and through your podcast. And so tell me a little bit about how important mentorship is for you in giving back. 
Yeah, th thank you for asking that. So again, I, I come from a teacher. I have a teacher yeah. mentality. And so helping, uh, making others feel better about themselves, I feel like that's a gift that God has given me. Even when I coach my kid's baseball team, right? There was a kid on the team this year that didn't get a hit all year and we were pretty good. And, you know, it was kind of like the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can. So, you know, when, when he was up, you know, I, I'd be saying from the dugout, you know, you're going to get a hit, you're going to get a hit and just making sure that you get the most out of everybody's talent. You know, I have, I know this sounds morbid, but right in front of me, I have a picture of a, on my computer desk, a picture of a gravestone and it says date, date of birth. It's got your name, like, so it's blank, right? So your name, so it doesn't say my name or yours, but right, your right. name, your date of birth, a, a date you pass. And then the, the last one, which is the most effective is number of lives affected with a question mark. And so no. for me, I, I know I can affect thousands of lives through our podcast and through our blog and, and various things. And, and to me, that's more important than selling another couple of homes a year. So everybody's got their different why and their different calling. And I feel like for me, that, that's what makes me happy. And that's uh, what I feel like my calling is. So that's why I mentor. I feel like there's a lot of takers in this world. And uh, if you can give, I, I believe if you help enough people achieve what they want, good things will happen in return. It's always that math of the universe. It's always that the more people you help, the more you get helped. It's 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 just that simple math. It's so true. I've seen it over and over again, and I love it. I agree. What advice would you give your ten-year-old self with the lens that you have today? Don't don't be afraid of failure. You know, I have a, I have a. 12 year old son, a 10 year old son who's turning 11 this week and a nine year old daughter. And so I'm giving them advice that I wish, you know, I'm not saying my parents didn't give me this advice, but, but so many people today are, especially in the social media, when you, you grew up, Michael and I grew up, we didn't have social media. So I know you like, Thank you God, be, I know, <laughs> seriously, I'm getting a lot of trouble. I'm sure there'd be stuff out there and I would never be a politician, but uh, but in all seriousness, right? I mean, social media, especially with the Instagram and and and, and all this out there, it, there's so much about image, 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 and people are worried about what others think more so now than I think ever. It's so and true. So, so you know, I, I do feel like for every time you're in a baseball analogy, every time you strike out, you're closer to that next hit. You know, you're, you know, I coach my kids in wrestling and, and I, I, I respect the heck out of them because they get pinned. They got to bounce back up. So life is the same way. You get knocked down eight times, you pop up nine times. And so don't be afraid of failure. You can learn a lot in wins and, and successes, uh, but many of life's best lessons uh, come in failure of not just you, but you can learn from other people's failures, right? That's sometimes, you know, learning from others. When I coach football and I'm coaching up kids, I, I tell the other kids that are watching, hey, I'm not just talking, you know, to Anthony here because you you might be in the same position of Anthony. So when I'm coaching him up, I want you guys to listen because you can learn from when I correct Anthony or when I pat him on the back. I love that because it is sort of like all about learning life and lessons and the fact that you have a 10 year old now i love that question for you that was great yeah that was right up my alley <laughs> so i have one final question for you michael in your book of life what's this chapter called perseverance i like that why you know uh for me um you know one of the signs in my office is prove them wrong you know michael i didn't come from uh you know, money. I came from blue collar. I was the first to go to college. You know, I was fortunate enough to be on some great athletic teams, uh, football in particular. I was on a state championship team, but nothing ever came easy to me. You know, I, I played uh, college football. I got a scholarship, but I didn't get a scholarship coming out of the high school. I, I had to go to the junior college route, which, you know, it's called second chance university, basically, right? A lot of these kids are, are struggling and, and they go to junior college. And I never started one game in college. And I sent out my highlight tapes to college. Usually they're calling you and they're asking coaches yeah. for highlight tapes. I did the exact opposite prospect, right? I was, right, I was right. prospecting before I knew what prospecting <laughs> was. And so, um, you know, but that's kind of shaped and molded me into to who I am today. And 
uh, you know, perseverance, I think, helps me when, you know, you start off and you t open up that text message and it's bad, right? We get kicked in the shins in our industry, in life, right? Oh, yes. and, and life is a lot like a video game. You start with all your energy and then you get that text, you get that annoying client, you get whatever it might be and, and your energy levels drop and sometimes coffee helps, but but it's kind of <laughs> like turbulence throughout the day. And so having having that that strong belief, having that mindset, because especially, you know, during this pandemic, right? There's a lot of people batting depression and suicide and, and health and everything else. And so, you know, having, having, having that core belief, you know, and, and sticking to it. And, and I do believe what you're reading and who you surround yourself with and who you listen to helps with your perseverance and helps shape and mold you into, you know, who you want to be. I love that. Michael, I can't thank you enough, not only for our friendship and for who you are, but really what you've done so much for others. You know, you, you're you tireless. You, you, you write books, you do your podcast, you reach out. It's that, it's that teacher in you that's never left. And it's always the idea of, you know, from coaching your kids' schools, athletic sort of organizations to everything you do every day. And I'm so glad that we're now in the same organization. We're going to be working closer together. And I just thank you for being you, my brother. And thank you for your friendship. And thank you for the conversation today. Uh, you're absolutely welcome. I appreciate what you're doing. Keep keep raising the bar. I uh, love your interviews and uh, love what you're doing as well. So uh, likewise, my friend. Thank you, Michael. And thank you all of you for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Thank you.